Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Carolyn. I am a mama to twin baby girls named Summer and Winter, and our family has traveled quite a bit. Overseas, international, huge time difference locations, and our babies were nine months old the first time that we flew all the way to Germany from the US, and then 10 months old when we returned. Again, we did the same trip at 14 months old, and they did so well with the overcoming jet lag portion of that. So that's why I wanna share with you all the things that we did that worked well for our babies and for us as parents to overcome jet lag on these trips because it is not always easy, but I'm going to share with you the tips that I can best recommend to help you get through it as smoothly as possible. As always, don't forget to subscribe and like. It definitely helps me grow my channel so I can make more of these videos for you guys. Let's get right to it. My biggest tip for overcoming jet lag, especially when traveling with babies, is to choose a schedule and stick to it as best you can. This goes for both your baby and also for you and any other family members that are traveling with you, to be honest. So let's say that your baby has a nap time at 9 a.m. and again at 2 p.m. Try really hard to help them stick to those nap times. Now, when you're flying or driving to your destination, don't worry so much about whether they're sleeping or not sleeping. Chances are they're gonna sleep when they're tired and that's okay, just let them do it. And again, even in the car, it's really likely that they are going to sleep just because of the rocking motion if they are tired at all. But keep in mind that once you get to your destination or once you get home, wherever it is that you're going, that is the time that it actually begins and you can really start trying to implement that schedule. So let it be flexible on the way there. Once you get home, there are a couple different things that you can do, whether it's you need to stay awake longer or if you need to go to bed earlier. So if you need to stay awake longer, use sunshine to your advantage and food and environments and any type of thing that you can do to bring yourself energy and feel entertained or just whatever it is. You know, even for your baby, let them see all the different things around them let them take in whatever stimulation is going on if it's just being outside and seeing the sunshine sometimes that can be a huge help or maybe it's trying new foods or just checking out a new space sometimes just seeing a new area will help them to be interested in the things around them and make them feel a little less tired or even just distracted from being tired and I'm not saying that you have to stay up all the way till the bedtime on the very first day that you're there it could be that you want to go to sleep in the middle of the afternoon, but try really hard to get as close as you can to your bedtime. So let's say that you usually go to bed at 9 p.m. and maybe your baby goes to bed at 7 p.m. Try to put your baby down at the same time as they usually go down and maybe give them an extra bit of milk or something to help them have enough nutrients to actually sleep long. Chances are that they are going to wake up in the middle of the night, which is fine. Just have a bottle ready or have whatever it is ready that you need to do. Be ready to go and comfort them for a little bit and then go back to bed. It's kind of like sleep training all over again for babies. But for you as an adult, you also need to make sure that you go to bed at the right time. And so let's say, like I said, if you went to bed at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. for a usual bed time let's not go past that so here's one of the biggest issues is once you have stayed up long enough yay you made it to the bedtime that's awesome go to bed because there are times when I've been like oh well now I feel so awake we could just stay up even longer you know we've done such a good job of staying up why don't we just hang out until we feel like we really want to go to bed no 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 don't fall into that because it's possible that you may be really excited that you stayed up late and things like that, but your body, you're trying to retrain yourself. And if you let yourself train the sleep cycle too much, you'll end up training yourself on a time that you don't want to go to sleep at. So for example, what I'm trying to say is, don't stay up all the way till midnight just because you can, just because you are awake. Go to bed and try not to be on your phone, try not to have any of the screens, and those will also help you fall asleep a little bit better if you need to. Additionally, try to hydrate, try to eat some good food, and if you need to go to bed earlier, sometimes those things can help. If you can just basically wind down, do whatever your normal nighttime routine is, and same with your baby whether it be bath time or just having a light dinner or a light snack, even if you're not hungry, try to just have a little something just to have enough nutrients to make sure that you can make it through the night. And then when you do, you will be very thankful. Now, here's the other thing, especially sleeping through the night as an adult and as a baby, 
like I said, there are chances are that you're probably gonna wake up a little bit earlier than you're meant to, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Try to go back to sleep as quickly as you can. Do what you need to do. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you're starving, then eat something. Don't torture yourself. Just go right back to bed after you're done drink some water, maybe keep something by the bed that's easily accessible. And then once you're done, go right back to sleep and then you can make it until the morning. The other big tip I have is don't take naps during the day if you don't usually take naps during the day. I know it can be difficult, especially if you're really tired the next day, but for me personally anyways, I try really hard not to take any naps during the day. And if I do, I limit myself to a very small short nap, like a power nap. Don't go over an hour, hour and a half, because if you do, then you're gonna set yourself back and you're gonna put yourself in a different time zone, making it that you won't feel tired when it's time to go to bed, and then that's just gonna really mess you up. So. Here's the thing, if you're coming back from a major international overseas trip, like the type of trips that we've gone on with our twin babies, it usually takes us between five and seven days to get completely back on track where they are sleeping all the way through the night from 7 p.m. to almost 7 a.m. every single night. And that's normal for us, that's normal for our twins, and it was when they were nine months old, 10 months old, and again at 14 months old, all the times that we've traveled, they have been able to get back on that schedule within one week. So similarly, it actually took us even less time as adults to get back on our normal schedule. It can be difficult to get back on schedule, especially if you're getting up to help a baby in the middle of the night when you're not used to doing that. Like I said, if you're used to your baby sleeping through the night, it's harder. If you're used to your baby not sleeping through the night, then maybe it's not as hard because you're used to that. Bottom line, just try really hard to focus on that schedule. And like I said, use sunshine to your advantage, use food and environments and people and whatever activities that you can think of to your advantage to get you up at the right time and help you stay up until it's time to go to bed. And then really try to honor those times. And even during the day, if your baby doesn't wanna nap during their normal times, just keep trying to get them as close to that nap time as they can. It's possible that they wake up early. It's possible that they don't want to go to sleep yet when it's time or maybe vice versa. Maybe they are really tired and it's just like not quite time yet. Just try your best to do whatever you can to engage them and help them stay awake until it is the right time and vice versa. If they are not tired yet, try to do any type of calming routine that you can and try to make it as dark as you can when it is their sleeping time. Because naturally, when we see light, we're drawn to actually being more awake and vice versa. When we have darkness surrounding us, it's a little easier to feel tired and have all of those sleepy hormones going on. I don't even know the right word. I'm not a pro at any of this, but I've just been speaking from experience. So I hope that my experience helps you out. And especially if you're traveling with a baby, I hope that this helps you get through the process of overcoming jet lag. And if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Don't forget to comment below and say, Hey, if you're new here and like this video, if it was helpful at all, thanks so much. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy seeing family travel videos, thanks guys. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.